Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to you, wherever you are in the world. I am Tigris Osborne. I'm the executive director of NAFA, the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance. Welcome to the NAFA webinar series. Um, today we are joined by Angel Austin, Brandon Gerard, and Max Airborne, who are going to be sharing some super fat perspectives with us and talking about how we can better support the fattest folks in our communities. Uh, before I introduce you to our special guests, uh, just just a few announcements for those of you who are new to NAFA, the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance was founded in 1969 and since then has worked to change perceptions of fat and to uh, eliminate size discrimination. Uh, you may not know that size discrimination is perfectly legal in um, many, if most places in the world are at least not explicitly illegal. And we want to change that to make it explicitly illegal uh, to um, prevent folks from <laughs> to make it explicitly illegal to discriminate based on height, weight, or any combination thereof. If you want to support our work in doing that, you can find information about the Campaign for Size Freedom, which works towards that end, on our website at naafa.org. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to our interpreters today from Pro Bono ASL. Today we are joined by Amber and Junie. Pro Bono ASL has been working with us for about three years. They do incredible work in the in the community all over the United States um, to you know provide these accessibility services. Please do support their work. Um, you uh, may think that because pro bono ASL sounds like they are free, that we do not pay them. But in fact, we do compensate our interpreters for their time so that they can offer those pro bono services um, to other kinds of events and activities and organizations that are doing really important work uh, that don't have the budget. We have the budget because of folks like you. Um, we are able to compensate our presenters at these webinars, our interpreters, our hardworking video editor, um, and our other folks behind the scenes, because like all of our other work, um, we are funded um, primarily by members of our community. Uh, please do consider supporting this work by making a donation today at nafa.org or by donating through Facebook or Instagram. This is my first Fat Liberation Month as the executive director of NAFA, and I have made a personal pledge to donate $1 for every person who makes a donation through our Meta fundraisers. Those are Facebook and Instagram fundraisers, and Meta, however you feel about them, covers all the processing fees for those fundraisers. So we get every penny of donation that is made through those methods. If you make your donation, by August 31st, the end of Fat Liberation Month, I will contribute a dollar for every one of you who does that. Um, so I, look, y'all, I'll get I'll make a payment plan. If y'all come through and it's more than I can handle in one month, I will make a payment plan. So don't hold back. I'm match, um, I'm not matching your donations, but I'll give one dollar for every donation, no matter how many people do that and how long it takes me to fulfill that promise if you all flood the donation pages. So Facebook or Instagram fundraisers that way, our website, any other way. Um, so, uh, without any further ado, I want to get into it with our guests. Uh, first, let me introduce you to everyone. Uh, Brandon Gerard, they, them, is a Black, non-binary, queer, and multidisciplinary content creator. They hope their stories, um, inspire, encourage, educate, and, inc and, um, and, um, oh, I said, I put encourage in my document twice. We double encourage them, Brandon. That's what we do. Um. Brandon wants to inspire you, educate you, and encourage you um, through their work. And I'm going to let them tell you a little bit more about their work later. Angel Austin is the advocacy and community leader at ASDA, our friends at the Association for Size, Diversity, and Health. And she is the creator of Sacred Space for Fat Bodies. She advocates for the most marginalized fat people, especially Black, super fat, and infinifats. We're going to talk about that terminology in just a minute. Um, and Angel fights uh, to make their voices heard as they are more often excluded from participation and representation, even within the framework of fat liberation, which is part of what we're here to talk about today. Um, you uh, you can find more about Angel on our website and you can find Angel um, at Sacred Spaces for Fat Bodies on Instagram and SSFFB on Twitter. 
Um, Max Airborne, uh, Key Ken or They Them, is a super fat artist and organizer in the San Francisco Bay Area. Max has been part of many projects over the years, including organizing the collective Fat Rose, um, the Art and Zine Project Fat Lib Inc., the Fat Liberation Archive, the Power to Live campaign, and the Disability Justice Culture Club, Bad Crip, and Fat Girl Zine. Thank you all for being here. We're actually going to start with Max because Max is also the co-author of an article that documents the introduction of the term super fat into our fat community lexicon. So Max, let's start with you. Is there anything we left out of your bio that you want folks to know about you? Uh, and then after that, if you would just tell us a little bit about the origin of the term super fat. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. My sound coming through. Great. Great. Um, so yeah, the, the only thing is um, I said that I would share a little bit about my pronouns. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to use the pronouns key and kin, and those terms were offered by Potawatomi scholar and ecologist Robin Wall Kimmerer as um, gender neutral pronouns for nature right? Trying to stop referring to nature as it and trying to reanimate nature in the way we think about nature. And I feel more kin to nature than I do to other human beings and definitely than I do to gender. And so um, I decided to start using those as my pronouns. And I'm going to post a link in the chat to the article where she talks some about this and offering it to her students. And um, if anyone wants to talk to me about that, if you have feelings about it or questions, I'd be happy to talk. Just um, send me a, a chat with your email and we can take it from there. Uh, okay. Thank you for offering that, Max. I. Um... You know, I really appreciate that uh, we could all just be asked to do our own work to learn about your pronouns. So I really just want to share some gratitude from the community, from me on behalf of the community, that you took the time to educate us about that. Thank you. Well, I, I like sharing about it because it's offering a real reframe to the general ways that we tend to think. And so I feel like it's it's I'm doing my part to try to help support that reframe of how we think about nature. Um and to say where it comes from also, that feels important to credit where this is coming from. Uh, okay, so let's talk about super fat. Yes. Um, to my understanding, and I've tried to like look this up, the term super fat was in fact invented by a group of us at a conference called No Lose. And for those who don't know about No Lose, No Lose is, um, I think they're kind of on hiatus from offering conferences right now, but they do still exist. And um, No Lose was basically a queer fat conference that happened maybe every year, every other year. It was started by um, fat queers, fat dykes, I think mostly in um, New York area. And it happened for a number of years. And um uh, many of the people I, in my life that I know today, I met at No Lose or we were active together at No Lose. And um, so a group of us, I think the term supersize was like popular in the media. I think there had been a movie called Supersize Me. I don't remember where that came in in the, in the uh, timeline of things, but we had a caucus there were a number of caucuses at No Lose for identity-based groups that wanted to hang out with each other for whatever reason. There was a People of Color caucus. There was um, maybe a disability caucus. I can't remember what all the caucuses were. And there um, was a supersized caucus. And so a number of us were part of the supersized caucus. And um, there was one time period in particular where a lot of the folks from No Lose were starting to get weight loss surgery and they were um, kind of fearing that they would be ostracized from the community if they got weight loss surgery, if they lost weight, they became thin. Um, and so they were bringing this to the community and the community was largely um, very supportive and empathetic. So there was a lot of, oh, don't worry, we'll still love you, we still love you. And meanwhile, the fattest folks who weren't getting weight loss surgery for, you know, whatever reasons, uh, they were 
hanging out with each other feeling horrible you know going well wow like with all this empathy for people who want to lose weight where's the support for us we already felt um marginalized in that community, which is a horrible feeling to be fat and to feel marginalized in a fat community. You know, it's like, wow, so I'm still too fat, I'm too fat for these people. So um, in the supersized caucus, we wanted to kind of, some of us were like on the verge of stopping attending because it, it felt so bad. And we talked about um, creating a new term. And um, we decided at that meeting that the term we wanted was super fat and we nobody had heard that term before and we decided that um that was going to be our term of empowerment for the fattest among us those for whom access was really an issue even in a fat space those for whom um you know we were all still considered kind of off limits in terms of sexual currency or even social currency um because we were so fat you know we were just invisible in this way and um so yeah we did we adopted the term super fat and we uh had a little thing where we announced it to the community you know we're like here and we made we made a list of demands i think and uh announced it to the community and we're like this is what we want we we want to be included we want to be supported we want you to see us and acknowledge us and do what you can to support us um, this is a fat community and the fattest of the fat are still part of the fat community. And so that that was the experience. And as far as I know, that was the birth of the term super fat. And um, recently someone coined the term infinifat, this woman named Ash, and um, and she made this like size chart. And suddenly super fat got defined as having a size range, you know, and the people of us who were at that no lose thing where we named this term, we're like, super fat doesn't have a size range. You know, it's, it's, it's infinite, essentially, you know, it, that's how we felt about it, right? Like, this is an, an, an infinite term um, for everyone who feels like access needs and doesn't get seen because of their access needs. For, it's partly for people who experience ableism as a fat person, disability and ableism. Um, you know, so we saw it as a very inclusive term, and then it got redefined as this sort of size range. And so we we had a, a, a little bit of, um, I don't know, just some feelings about it and felt like the answer to this is actually to tell the story as we understand it and um, make that visible. And so I think somebody posted a link. Um, I, I posted the link to the article. Um, so for those of you who would like to read the article that I referenced that Max, um, Max and Cherry Midnight have documented this origin story, I posted the link in the chat for you. We'll add it to the captions for the YouTube video as well, where you can easily find it by just Googling um, uh, super fat origin. <laughs> it actually yeah. comes that um so we'll talk about some of the other um in terminology death fat and infinifat and some of the other terminology and we'll bring angel and jared in in just a minute um i want to share a couple things uh from my historical knowledge and from some things i see floating by in the chat um barbara bruno points uh, uh who's one of the founders of health at every size um as a concept uh points out that super size me was actually a really anti-fat movie uh but that superwoman was a uh um a term used in some groups at nafa bill fabry who is also with us who's the designated founder of nafa um points out that folks at nafa were using super size um or ssbbw super size big beautiful woman um as some of the ter terminology in in nafa predating the the term super fat coming into um our dialogue and then um there is also um a question about the term death fat so i want to make sure that we get to that terminology as well um i want to also share um for those who haven't read the article i want to share a direct quote from the article because i think this is important um and then we'll, we'll bring angel and brandon in to also join in the conversation um max and sherry wright Small fat, mid-size, and large fat were names without room for us. We chose super fat as a fourth category to represent and include the very fattest in our community. We specifically picked a name that had a superhero vibe because we were going to be our own superheroes. Some of us even made capes. 
Uh, we knew we had to be ready to defend each other and be prepared to swoop in as a group to address the disposability culture surrounding super fatties. We created a super fat call and response that could function like a bat signal if backup was needed. If any super fat person felt alone or if sizes stuff was happening, they could call out and all the super fatties within hearing distance would loudly respond from wherever we were. It was a glorious, it was glorious to call out for support in a public space and hear super fats respond from all corners. Um, so before we bring Angel and um, Brandon into the conversation, Max, will you teach us the super fat call out? Do you remember it? I don't remember it. And Cherry and I talked about this. We were trying to remember the call. I, I wish that uh, uh, she could say it in the comments if she knows anything, but I don't remember the call. If I'm anyone sure it was super fat. So, like, was super fat. So, you yeah. like the first person said super and everybody else answered fat. Yeah. And you would call back. So, it would be like, super fat. Super fat. Super fat. Only it would be a lot of people calling back fat. So okay. I'm, I'm going to do something a little orth un un orthodox for what we usually do in our webinars. And I'm going to invite those of you who are here who identify as super fat to turn your microphones only on. Um, and I'm going to ask Max to lead us in the super and any of you who identify with that term yourself to call back with the fat. So we can just practice that a couple of times in community here together and revive that. Uh, mics only, please leave your cameras off for now. Um, Max, will you start us off? Super. Fat. fat. Super. Fat. fat. Super. Fat. 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 Thank you all for doing that. So remember that when you're out at other community functions um, and credit it to those folks at No Lose. And if you don't know No Lose's work, No Lose is also a 501c3 charity. So if that matters to you in terms of who you give your money to, uh, you can donate to them as well as NAFA. And you can find information about them on their website, which is nolose.org. Um, no Lose was founded by Dot Nelson Turnier in New York. Um, and there's their whole, the origin story of the organization is all available on their website. I encourage you to learn that piece of fat activist history as well. Um, thank you, Max, for grounding us in this conversation. Um, Brandon, let's start with you. When is the first time you heard the term super fat and what does it mean to you? Uh, the first time I heard super fat, um, unfortunately was on uh, clubhouse <laughs> that dark and dangerous time. Um, where, you say what Clubhouse is for people who don't. Who, who um, for, <laughs> for those who uh, don't know, Clubhouse was this app that came around on the time of the lockdown. So um, 2020, uh, towards the end of the year, um, at first it was just open to iPhone users and then it was open to everyone. Um, originally, it was great conversations, um, but then it... Um, kind of devolved to a point where <laughs> um, people had to debate uh, debate their identity um, and debate uh, their validity and just their life in general. Um, and, you know, just like all the marginalized identities that were attached, fat, uh, fatness was attached. Um, so that was one of the first times I heard the term specifically, uh, super fat. Um, and I was like, yes. <laughs> um because like it you know there there are marks differences there's you know some unlearning um that some people have done some that have not and then of course some additional challenges um that those of us who um identify as super fat or infinite fat um you know we go through that smaller fat people do not so um, I thought it was amazing language to kind of frame the conversation um, whenever it was used in a productive way. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that was the first time I came um, across fat. What was the other part of the question? Um, I uh, how, yeah, how you relate to the term, how you first heard it, and how you relate to it. So I think. Oh you yeah. Um, so um, as a lifetime uh, fat person and. Um, now a uh, twice super fat person. Um, at first, um, there was a great degree of shame 
um, with the term Mm -hmm. or like Mm -hmm. just if I would have heard about super fat, let's say early 2000s, 2008, whenever I was like freshly adult, 18, 19, um, there um, would have been a degree of shame um, because of the things that I had to unlearn. But um, right now with just how I exist in my body, how I exist in my spirit, it's just a part of who I am. And like, it's strange to people whenever you tell them that I am, even though I have my own relationships and like challenges that I face with my body, this is the happiest that I've been in my body. Mm-hmm. Like it makes people go, oh. <laughs> it jumbles the brain. But um I, maybe it comes with age, maybe it comes with acceptance, I'm not sure. But um, as far as my journey, especially with like the term super fat, like it's, it is what it is. <laughs> and I love myself and that's part of who I am. So, well, and I think part of it comes with community, right? With, with accessing and, and being in community with other folks. And Angel, I know that's part of what your work is about, is about building community that is specifically focused on super fat and infinite fat folks with, like, as you said in your bio, uh, a real concentration on, um, on Black folks as well. Um, Angel, where, where did you first hear the term super fat and what's your relationship with that term? You know, first, I just want to thank you, Max, for that education because... When I came into this, I'd say it's probably 2016, um, where I really kind of embraced Infinite Fat for myself, was through Ash and a um, interview that I did for her, her podcast. And I was so blown away because I had been to like the BBW bashes and like learned that there are actually people out in the world who love a body like mine, you know, people who uh, were existing and having fun and living life in a body like mine. And it just blew my mind that it was possible. And so it was like coming into a whole new world. And that was years ago. So, but as far as the activism work and liberation and like really just showing up in my body, um, I didn't learn about that until I met Ash and I saw Ash online and Ash had a body like mine. And I was like, whoa. And Ash was showing her body and taking pictures of her body and lingerie and, and like being just like serious about it and like not taking any crap about it. Um, I was like, you mean I can do that? (laughs) Like I can actually love myself and show up and not be ashamed of my body and want to change it or shrink it or, in my big body, like this body, which it was so different from so many of the other fat bodies that I saw, like that was actually possible. And so my frame of rest, re- uh, reference was totally shaped by the infinite fat uh, perception. Um, I didn't know about super fat until I learned about the spectrum that, um, that Ash uh, put forth. And so I didn't know that super fat was meant to include that. I've always seen it as there's a fattest of the fats, you know, and then there's a group that's below them and there's a group that's below them. And, and so I understand your frustration. I also feel that it's kind of helpful because um, there's so much hatred um, put toward people who are beyond what we call an acceptable fatness. Um, their, their perceptions in the media, like we all know the shows, uh, we know that the opinions and the, the ideas that people have around, you know, this kind, particular type of fatness. And so um, I just realized that as a person who is super fat, infinite fat, uh, if you will, um, and who's also black, um, those marginalized, those marginalized ways in which I show up in the world look different. Um, the experience is completely different. And so I understand that. And I put forth, um, you know, ideas about how, you know, to do, you know, self-care or like specific types of self-care. That's what sacred space was all about. It was because I wanted a place where I could go to, to be touched and, and uh, get the self-care, the massage and get my feet done. And after having horrible experiences in the world doing that, um, table capacities, you know, capacities for chairs, you know, table widths and things like that were just an issue uh, for a person in my body. And I also realized that 
if I could make space for the biggest of us, then it would be space that would be made for everybody down to the, you know, to the smallest of us. So I just wanted to power my way through, you know, like the Kool-Aid men and make space for all of us, you know. And so, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but and also um, from a um, liberatory standpoint and from an anti-racist standpoint, I realized, and even from like my with my work at uh, NAS- uh, ASDA, that we are uh, the fattest blackest of, our, of, of us are the ones who stand to have the most harm done to us by the medical industrial complex. And so all of that is related. All of that has to do with how we show up in the world. And so that's why it's my specific focus uh, with sacred space. Yeah, and thank you for that work. Um, there's a question in the chat about resources for super mm-hmm. fat and fat people that don't want to get weight loss surgery. You know, Max raised that that um, as part of a part of the history that like, you know, some of it was around like the, the way people were talking about weight loss surgery and aff- affirming folks who were doing that. Mm-hmm. But what about mm-hmm. folks who don't want to do that? Um, and we can definitely, folks should definitely share resources in the chat. Um, I encourage people to look at um, Anna Chapman's um, self-care for fat bodies resources. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are lots of other other resources. Um, Angel, are there any other particular sources that you want to shout out besides your own space that you've created that you have found really helpful for infinite fats who want to be in a space where they're not exposed to diet culture and weight loss recommendations? Um, I I think I did share the space that we created in our in the, the NAF, uh, NAF event the other week. Um, I would. I don't know if this is a safe place to do it, but um, if, how can I, how can I get someone to message me? Can you, DM, if you're here, you DM in me on sacred space. If you have any interest in a completely, well, as safe as possible space online. Angel, would, you just, would you, yeah, would you describe that space as much as you can while keeping okay. it? anonymous in the way that you need to a folks okay. who at our fat fridays virtual social club got mm-hmm. to hear from angel about this space but would you for folks who weren't there just say what it is um so, we find a way for folks to get to you if yes they, yes not. just come to me for sure so what it is if you i posted on my page actually um kind of some information about it but all it is is a uh, a space that is like an old school forum site like from back in the day um it's not on any social media um, and it is very um, heavily um, vetted. People that come in are heavily vetted. You have to do it in person, um, Zoom, where we can visibly see you and know that you're, you're not a ne'er do well. And, and um, it's just a space for it's an intersectional space uh, for anybody in a fat body uh, that identifies as fat. Uh, we have specific queer spaces. We have black spaces. We have all different types of spaces where you can come and find, um, you know, people that you can just be in community with that do not, that are not talking about weight loss, that are not talking about restriction. Um, But I want to venture to say something also. um, And I don't know if it'll be um, taboo here, but I have really been trying to um, talk about, and I know, uh, Tigress, you posted the other day about pleasure and movement and and about um, ways that we can feel good, uh, ways that we can take back from exercise and diet culture to feel good in our bodies that have nothing to do with weight loss, nothing to do with changing our bodies, but everything about feeling good, you know, maybe getting some autonomy, getting stronger. I just uh, released a, a totally reclined, like in the bed, strength, um, strength uh, PDF, interactive PDF that you can use if you just want to stretch or feel good or feel stronger. Um, If you feel that's a need for you. Uh, I really feel like we need to talk more about how movement and pleasure and all these things work to help us in our bodies um, that we don't have to resort to trying to change or, you know, shrink or do anything um, that we can work to feel better. I feel like diet culture and all these things have, have, tried to rob us of that, you know, and even any mention in fat liberation of these things. Sometimes I've been called out for it. You know, I know I'm taking a risk talking about it today, but I've been called out for it. Um, 
because it's perceived as ableist. And a lot of times they didn't know who they were talking to because if they'd have known it was me, they might have um, understood. So anyway, um, I just offer that as resources. Um, I even have some to give away if anybody wants any. It's just a PDF. You can click on it. You'll see me and my body um, moving on YouTube. So, uh, yeah. Where, and, and Angel, will you just say again where folks can find that PDF? That's in my bio, in my, the link in bio. It's Recline Strength and Mobility. Thank you. you. Click on it. And folks, if you, what we will do um, with this webinar, as we did last year when Anna Chapman joined us to talk about self-care, is we will capture any specific resources that you offer, um, and we'll share those either through our newsletter or blog or on our website. So if you have specific links, you know, things that you, um, things that you use, things that you attend, things like that, that are related to, um, you know, that are especially um, important to and accessible to super fat people, um, please do share those links in the chat, and then we will find a way to share them out with folks who were not here with us today. Um, so this, so I want to, um, I want to go ahead and invite our audience to, you can start queuing up some questions in the chat if you have questions. I want to share right now the question from, uh, this is a question from Debbie who says, giving specific requirements to call oneself super, mat, super fat, for example, you must weigh a X number of pounds, seems problematic, but it also feels inappropriate for someone to claim that label when they don't have the experiences that super fat people have. Are there thoughts on navigating that? Or is that maybe too broad of a question? What do y'all think about that? The sort of like how we define who gets to use that term for themselves or if we define who gets to use that term for themselves. Uh, Max, we haven't heard from you in a minute. Will you jump in with the first answer to that one? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's about access. You know, if you experience fat-related um, access issues, you know, if you go places and you can't fit in the chairs, um, you know, those are, those are clues that you might actually be super fat. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I agree with like weight being a weird arbitrary measure. And, you know, it, it is also, it is about size too, at some level. So I don't have a perfect answer. I think if you if you don't experience access issues related to your size, I don't think you're super fat. That's my personal opinion. There's no nobody uh, making a rule book about it, but that seems to be the general uh, way that I think about it and the other folks who were at that meeting that I talked about. Well, and what I love about thinking about things like public accommodation is that mm -hmm. it's do, do chairs fit you, do spaces fit you, can you use public bathroom stalls, things like that, is it's less gendered than using some of the fashion terminology that is sometimes used mm -hmm. to define yeah. the sort of like when we think about privilege along a scale of fatness mm -hmm. and who has access and who has social privilege and all of that, we often talk about smaller fats, mid fats, fats, very fats, super fats, whatever the terms are. We often talk about that using, that means you're a size 14, 16. That means you're a size 28 or higher. And those are all, you know, clothing sizes that are designated as clothes for women. And I think that often leaves other folks out of the conversation or makes them feel seen. I, can see that. I love using some of those other access points uh, in terms of thinking about it. Um, Brandon, I think I, you were about to say something and I interrupted you, I believe. Um, so... When I think of this question, I think of, um, like any other uh, white supremacist form of uh, uh, oppression, like it's how <laughs> the um, uh, the spectrum of uh, oppression, right? Like I think of colorism as like a like something that could be used to compare. Everybody on this call. Um, faces issues with colorism and is affected by colorism. Everybody on this call is affected by fat phobia, but there is definitely a, a increased degree of oppression for people who are darker skin or who are larger size. Um, you know, me and a, like a smaller fat person can go to the doctor and they say, you know, Oh, this person, you know, you're they're perfectly fine. Maybe you need to change your, your diet. But mm -hmm. I think about whenever I went to the hospital last year, they 
didn't even try to get my consent. They were trying to give me insulin. When I was like, y'all just gave me a steroid shot. Like, I, of course my sugar's high. <laughs> like, I'm not doing it in four days. I know, I, you know, I'm not pre-diabetic. And then, like, whenever everything leveled out, they were like, oh, you're right. I'm like, yes. Like, I know because <laughs> I, you know, spent this time with my body. I just got tested at the doctor. Like, I, I know where I am. But, like, because, you know, there's not a, you know a trust with uh, fat people in their bodies. So fat well, long- yeah, go. Well, and, and when we're talking about medical spaces, one of the things that we were talking about for super fat people is literally, can you be in those spaces? Okay. Hey, do they, do they have a bed for you? Do they just do the machines work for the way I was like get in them? Can <laughs> you- <laughs> and especially if you were also any size of fat, especially super fat and disabled, do you have other physical, mm-hmm. you know, um, access issues then like literally can you be there right that's for me that's one of the one of the questions about mm-hmm. the sort of scale of privilege is mm-hmm. is not just the sort of like do you feel welcome there but the, 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 where is the break between people who literally cannot be there mm-hmm. and people who can still be there in some capacity or other? Mm-hmm. Uh, so do you want to add anything to this question about yeah, was, designating folks yeah i was i was gonna say i, I totally understand what you're saying about the gendered uh, issue with gendering with the sizes for clothing. Um, and I also also want to say that uh, as far as the question is concerned and how a person, you know, I understand that could be problematic, but I just want to reiterate that what, what we're saying is, is that there are people who, I'll give you a, an example, it's the best way to do it. Say you are being um, examined on a table that can only hold, let's say 400 pounds, right? Um, maybe that is a standard. I see that if you go shopping and you're looking online for stuff, you see that there are a lot of cutoffs is like 400 pounds for a lot of stuff. Well, what would you classify a person? This is just a question. What would you classify a person using weight? Which we, I mean, it's, it's the reality, right? That a, a person that's 400 pounds, would that person be super fat? If that person's super fat, um, then what do you do about the person that's 600 pounds or 700 pounds? You know, like, how do you make those those designations and how can you maneuver in this space when we're talking about things, when we are advocating, like with ASDA, for we're going to see doctors and trying to do these things to get the access. How do you, can you, is it okay to make those designations uh, even among um, people who would be considered super fat? You know, that's kind of the question for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just put it out Can I respond? Can I respond? Please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like absolutely, you know, I think, I don't think that um, in saying that, you know, we had some feelings about like the term mm-hmm. super fat being like defined uh, by uh, by people who were, you know, defining us into a, they were narrowing our definition. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think that we um, are saying that people shouldn't use the term infinifat or Mm -hmm. any other term. I think people should define themselves how they want, you know, and I, you know, I hear you about the usefulness and the need for defining things based on specific experiences. There's a comment in the chat I'm seeing from Sandra who says, I think it's not just about experiencing an access problem, but about how consistently we face access problems and how mm-hmm. severe that interference with accessibility is. Maybe yeah. sometimes a seatbelt is tight versus sometimes a seatbelt does not fit versus no seatbelt ever fits versus mm-hmm. no cars fit regardless mm-hmm. of seatbelts, right? Like there mm-hmm. is, there are differences in experience and I think mm-hmm. they need to be identified. Mm-hmm. Now, that feels really important. Yeah. So yes, please, please do. Yeah. Well, and there, are, there are also I also see some folks. Um, it looks like it started with a comment from Shiloh. Um, there's some folks talking about the the particular intersection of being super fat and disabled, and how hard it is to get access to equipment that you need, mobility equipment, or any other kinds of assistive equipment that you need. Um, how hard, and also we should always talk about you know what we often refer to as the fat tax, the extra money it costs you to get the things even if you can get them. Um, that yes. you know, certainly that that cost increases at the same time 
as economic opportunity often decreases. It decreases, it does. Um, mm -hmm. Or, be, you know, like things, certain things become inaccessible completely. Um, mm -hmm. Angel, do you want to talk about your gig project for super fat and infinite fat people? For sure, yeah. Um, actually, Brandon, Brandon's one of the giggers. <laughs> um, what I'm trying to do because of that disparity and because of the work that I do specifically in mutual aid for the people that we talk about that I serve, because like you said, the money goes down as the cost goes up. Um, I wanted to develop a program where people with privilege, no matter what size they are, uh, could call in um, people who are black and fat to work, uh, to do specific work, um, whether it be jobs, uh, projects, consulting, whatever it is, whatever the qualifications are and find space for them uh, to, to do that work. Um, I haven't got a lot of people to, to help. Um, I do a lot of stuff and um, mutual aid is one of them. So I'm kind of caught sometimes between uh, really trying to advocate for people that I have that I share with every Friday or every, you know, every weekend and finding the people who can provide the jobs. Um, and it could be like a regular job nine to five, but more often than not, it's going to be like a gig or some contract work that these people are able to do. They have amazing skills. The issue is that <clears throat> I've been thinking about writing about this, but um, like I would say super fat and brilliant, you know, a cautionary tale, like fat people are the people that I've met in this community are some of the most brilliant, amazing, creative, um, just stellar individuals. Um, but of course we live in a society that's white supremacist, that's fat phobic, that's anti-fat and people look at us and make certain assumptions. And unfortunately it's people that often are in our community, right? And people who claim to be about fat liberation. We are talking about, uh, you read in my bio, people talk about, uh, I was talking about uh, the issues that the fattest fat people have even within fat liberation. I could talk about that all day long. Um, and so there's this perception, some bias that people might not even be aware of that just make these assumptions about us. And I want to get past that because I want to get us working and I want us to get, you know, be able to take care of ourselves and get a livable wage and, you know, be able to thrive, not just survive, but like thrive and have what we need and live our lives, get the medical care that we need, get the medicine that we need, get the everything that we need therapy, whatever it is, you know, to be able to afford that. So that's why I created Get Fat. Yeah. And thank you. And please, you know, folks, I mean, I saw somebody in the, in the chat say, you know, I'm here as a super fat ally. Is that such a thing? It should be. Okay. <laughs> it needs to be. And so like one of the best things that you can do in terms of allyship is this kind of what Angel's talking about, about mm -hmm. like, you have work for people, you have mm -hmm. uh, opportunities for people, you know, mm -hmm. share, share those and support those. And also mm -hmm. think about the, um, the, their angel and many others in fact communities share mutual aid requests from people mm -hmm. uh, that are often from people who are having a more difficult time working because mm -hmm. they're being, mm -hmm. you know, on the larger end of the fat spectrums. And mm -hmm. so um, supporting those things is super important. Mm -hmm. um, Angel, we can't talk about it all day, but let's talk specifically about that question of what you could talk about all day about um, anti-super fatness within fat liberation spaces. There's a question in the chat from Bill that says, um, you know, could it be possible that um, that some of the um, the the way that super fats react, that smaller fats react to super fat has to do with their own fear of becoming super fat. Mm -hmm. um, how do y'all respond to that question? And do you have other thoughts about fat lib spaces specifically and how we could be doing better? Let me pull my notes up because, you know, I was hoping you'd ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> Angel came with notes. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, just one thing, one thing. So I've been asked um, to do a lot of different things in this community. And one of the big issues, there's this kind of undercurrent of, uh, I mentioned it earlier, acceptable fatness and this idea that where people won't say it right outright, the actions show it. So like, if you're, for example, you're planning a conference, um, hope it's not in person, but if it happens to be in person uh, at this point and you're planning all the things around the conference, where you're going to eat, what you're going to do, um, get somebody on the planning committee who is in Finifat or 
hire somebody outside of that, you know, your group, consult, spend your budget. Because I'm saying that if you can't find ex- the stuff that's accessible for the fattest people and you're supposedly weight inclusive and you're saying that you're this thing, but but fatness or, or access, accessibility rather, is an afterthought or you do it in the moment, that's a problem, right? Um, we talked about clothes. We talked about, um, you know, items for self-care, all these things. I really just want people who are in bodies that are fat, but not the fattest bodies, to consult people, uh, to do the work, do the research to find out if you're saying with your words and you're putting out there. I remember Saucy West did the, the whole fight for inclusivity thing and people were like really losing with their mouths talking about this This clothing line is for everybody. And it's like, don't say that if it's not, right? Like if it's not really, and you haven't done work, don't say it. You know what you can say? I consulted with someone very recently in Pilates that wanted to like, literally in Pilates, right? That wants to make their Pilates uh, work more inclusive. And I said, you know what? There ain't no machines for us. You know this, right? Say it. If you got to do some different moves, like if you really want to be inclusive, say on your website, we do not have a way to do Pilates the way you're coming thinking you can do Pilates. And we see that that hole, that gaping hole. We want to make it work for you, but we can't do it right now. Just say that. You know what I'm saying? Like, be honest. People want so badly to perform. I'm sorry, y'all. I feel like I'm preaching, but people people want so badly to perform and they want so badly to to be perceived a particular way. And all they're doing is causing harm. And this is people who are claiming inclusivity, claiming to be accessible, claiming all saying all these words but not really delivering. Like, is it for fat people? Which fat people? You're planning a trip overseas and we want all the fat beauties to go. Like, tell me about accommodations. Tell me about like uh, uh, resources for, you know, blood clots and and all the things that might happen to us if we go and we're really fat. Tell us about how much the seats are going to cost. What about the hotel? Can the bed hold me? Can I, with my wheelchair, you know, make it into the, to, to the bedroom? Uh, how is it, like, all, do the research. And if you don't know how to do it, you don't you have you don't have the the you have a blind spot, right? You don't have the vision to know what it is that you need to do. And, and ask, like I volunteer, like no, no, I don't volunteer, pay me. But you know what I'm saying? I'm here. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like there are those of us that we can work together um to help answer those questions for you before you make this whole large plan and do a lot of harm to fat people who would love to go, who would love, you know, I, I have FOMO all the time. I look online and I see all these things that are available to people who are, they're saying, I look on it, I click on it, because they say it's for fat people. And when I get there, it's not for me, you know? And I, I'm just tired of it. I'm just, I'm tired of it, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can. And Max, do you want to, do you want to add anything specifically about <laughs> fat lib spaces to what Angel has said? Brandon, you want to go ahead? Um, I um, think about creative spaces and like um, I'm a dork, so like cosplay, like you know, all of all of those spaces um, that are supposed to be fat inclusive. And again, they're only talking about one specific kind of of fat. And I know for me, whenever I started my journey with photography and storytelling, I wanted to be able to include all bodies, like including myself. Like it even got to the point where it's like, how could I say that I um, am doing self-portrait photography if I'm afraid to show my body? And there was a whole reveal. I was like, yes, we're going to put on some Fenty or Fenty robe and just <laughs> put it all out there. Boom. <laughs> but um, it's it's really devastating. It's really sad <laughs> to, just like you said, um, outside of the FOMO of like traveling and like these excursions, like even um, creatively, like stories, photography, imagery, mm-hmm. um, 
advertisements, uh, TV shows. Mm -hmm. Like you're you're saying that you're wanting to create like diversity and and include and like have a, a belonging space for everybody. And you're still picking and choosing which bodies you want to represent. Um, so I know for me, <laughs> I'm, I'm over here and I'm like this small little thing, but my entire purpose is to include all that I can on the journey. Um, and I, I hate that COVID kind of got in the, in the way of me doing more portraits of people, but, um, soon, like I, I hope to really like capture the beauty of everybody. Um, so look out for that, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, I everything that you said, like I, you preached, like, and it's, it's more overarching and it's much more menacing than just like, uh, you know, going to Bermuda or going to Jamaica. Like it's it's also just in our day to day, like what we see in our media, in mm-hmm. in everything, and it's it's really mm-hmm. devastating when they're saying <laughs> they want to include you, but mm-hmm. like the actions aren't matching up. You know, uh, speaking of media, for those who haven't seen it yet, I really do love the National Geographic show that Jeff Jenkins is hosting called mm-hmm. Never. 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 Um, which is a a beautiful example of super fat visibility, but which the logistics of, and it's it's an international travel show, travel Mm -hmm. adventure show. Mm -hmm. And Jeff is doing some really incredible things that we never get to see fat people doing, but they are very seldom talking about the logistics of how you get to do that if you are not traveling with a National Geographic budget and a National Geographic film crew. Mm -hmm. Um, It's maybe the only criticism I have of the show, and I understand why it doesn't fit in the narrative of the show itself. Um, But there are some fat travel groups who are, you know, um, who are sharing resources. Uh, Again, the name of that show, if you want to check check it out, is Never Say Never. I feel like a paid spokesperson for that show because I talk about it all the time. But I I think it's a really uh, beautiful example of fat visibility in mainstream media right now. Um, That is actually a super fat group because everybody also wants to talk about survival of the thickest, which I think is also a beautiful show, but is not the same kind of fat visibility as as Jeff's show because Jeff is a super fat person. Super fat person. Um, uh, Max, do you have any any sort of final thoughts on fat lib spaces? Yeah. um, I, I feel like in in all of my organizing, I, I have been for the past, I don't know, number of years, I have really been trying to get people to um, integrate fatness and disability together in our thoughts, or at the very least, to get fat people and disabled people um, allied with each other. Um, and there is so much reluctance. And, you know, it's, it's, and I think it, it was mentioned here and also in the chat uh, about how, you know, um, disabled people are, you know, often just as likely to be fat hating as the rest of the world. And mm-hmm. fat people are just as likely to be ableist. And um, a lot of it is very internalized, right? And so that's part of why as we start becoming older, fatter, more disabled, um, you know, there's a lot of, of shame and self-hatred and um, we don't know how to talk about it, right? We're afraid of each other because of that. We don't know how to talk about it. And I really feel like um, coming to grips with disability, learning about disability justice, you know, which really centers um, black folks and folks of color around disability and ableism and the ways that the system puts those things together. Um, I, I think that fat people really need to do the do the work of um, becoming uh, disability justice. Um, I don't know, centered. I guess I'll say, you know, and and also for fatness to get included in the ways that disability justice talks about um, people. You know, I think those things really go together. And I think it's important, it's vital for our liberation to actually look at these things that the way that society controls our bodies, marginalizes us further, all those things are linked. Race, able, ableism, racism, ableism, anti-fatness, they all go together, along with so many other things too. 
let's not be afraid of the other things, right? Like let's mm -hmm. um, encourage how we listen to the ways that people um, experience marginalization based on something about their body, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's all true, you know, it's all mm -hmm. vital to, for us to be looking at and um, making allies and developing um, solidarity, essentially. I totally agree. And there's a, I, I just posted today and I posted on threads recently. I just commented today on a post that was an anti-racist post. Um, and I was like, I'm looking longing for the day that these people who are just anti-racism warriors, black people for the most part, start talking about the link between anti-fatness and anti-blackness more so. Um, how that you can't separate them, right? Like it's inextricable. So I, I totally feel you. Like we, we need to like come together and, and, you know, figure out how we can all support each other and always centering the people who whose voices need to be heard, you know, and deferring mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and thank you for being here and, and talking about that, Angel. And I just, again, want to recognize your, your work in talking about that, being somebody mm -hmm. who's very out there in the community visibly talking about it. Mm -hmm. And one thing, I'm just going to say this, allies, and I'm going to keep on saying this. Thank you so much for the ways um, that we are seeing folks acknowledge the work of Dr. Sabrina Strings, who is not a fat person, by the way, mm -hmm. um, and of Deshaun Harrison um, around looking at the intersections of anti-fatness and blackness and anti-blackness specifically. Mm -hmm. And also, please stop act acting like these are the only two black people who talk about these things, because I see that a lot in this community. And that is inaccurate <laughs> so please look around for who else is talking about the, no disrespect to their work like all respect to their work and also uh there's some other folks talking about this and who have been talking about it for a long time so please um hey please pay attention thank you um i didn't see who it was but to the person who shared the resources of their work and please do share some of the resources if you have them mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time to continue the conversation today, but what we will do is we're going to leave the room open for a little while so that folks who want to um, contribute things in the chat for um, resources, also questions. If you have questions for Angel, Brandon, or Max that you did not, we didn't get to today, I will be happy to follow up with them and get their answers, and we'll include those in that crowdsource document of resources. Um, so I want to say thank you again. Um, we always end with the, if you didn't get to, if there's anything we didn't ask um, that you wish we had. So let me give you just a quick, like a one minute answer there for each of you. If you have something that you wish we had asked you about, um, let's, uh, let's start with um, Brandon, please. All right, um, real quick, speaking through it. Um, I want to thank um, all of the allies and all the people responsible for me being right here in this space. Um, specifically, thank you, Angel. <laughs> thank you. Um, reading, uh, do, yeah, let me not get into it because I get emotional. Um, I think of um, people like Gervais. I think of people um, like reading Roxane Gay's Hunger in her relationship with her body. Um, there, there are so many people um, who have done amazing, wonderful work in just existing um, authentically um, that I want to stand gratitude to, so. Oops. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Um, Max? What's the question? Final thoughts or anything that you wish we had asked about that we didn't ask about? Oh my God, Gervais here. Hey girl. Yeah, she is. And they are. Um, I'm not sure what I wish you would have asked about, but I, I realize that, you know, as I, as I look at our fellow panelists, I'm just so grateful. And Angela, I've seen your work around. I know you've been doing the Fat Mutual Aid stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I haven't been part of Sacred Space for Fat Bodies, but I, I have seen it and I have, I'm just so grateful for everything that you've been doing. And uh, I'm getting ready to send you a t-shirt um, that I'm really excited about. And uh, 
Uh, yeah, I just, I feel so grateful to be in community with you all. And Brandon, I haven't known about you before, but I'm so glad to encounter you. And I look forward to seeing more of your work. And I hope you get to do more portraiture soon. And Tigress, thank you so much for being the amazing host that you are. You do such a great job. And thank you to the interpreters and who also do an amazing job. And I'm just so glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Um, Angel, any final thoughts from you or anything you wish we had asked about? Um, I just love this community. That's a great final thought. That is a, that is a beautiful this final thought. Community just saved my life. So um, let's end on that. I mean, I'm going to say some administrative stuff, but let, <laughs> let's end our panel on that thought. Thank you all for being here, Angel, Brandon, and Max. Thank you to Amber and Junie from Pro Bono Dance <laughs> to all of you who actively participated in the chat. For some of the questions that we didn't get to today, um, there were a couple of questions about um, accessibility. There were some questions about uh, finding medical providers. We will share some of those resources out with folks who were here um, uh, via your emails that you registered with. Um, we also, uh, did have Shiloh George, who is here with us in the chat today, um, presented earlier this month on some resources for self-advocating with your medical teams. And we got into a lot of other things during that. That video will be coming to YouTube soon. All of our Fat Liberation Month videos, uh, Ifa Shina Clear did some work around um, accessibility and movement. Um, so we have um, everything that we did during Fat Liberation Month that was recorded. We had a couple of unrecorded sessions, but everything that was recorded will be coming to our YouTube channel, which is NAFA official very soon. Um, and you can also see our past webinars, including folks like Dr. Sabrina Strings and Deshaun Harrison and some of the other people who've been mentioned today. Um, I do also wanna give a shout out to Ash, um, who was mentioned several times here. You can find Ash on Instagram at, um, at ash.fatlip. Um, so that you can, um, you know, fo follow her work and see uh, when she gets back to her. Uh, is it InfiniFat Mondays? I think it is. But she does mm -hmm. a lot of InfiniFat uh, visibility stuff. Um, and also want to um, mention our friends at Algo and Friendly Like Me, which are two apps. Algo is still in development, but they're doing lots of great stuff on their social media channels. And Friendly Like Me is available already. And you can use those apps to identify places based on their accessibility to disabled and fat bodies. Um, so please do think about all those resources. And again, we'll share some of the things that we've learned today. Um, thank you for being with us. Uh, happy Fat Liberation Month. We have one more virtual event to go on Thursday, our Fat and Happy Hour. Please join us for that if you can. That one is just pure joy and celebration. Of, of being in fat community together on the last day of Fat Liberation Month. Um, we have lots of fall virtual activities coming up as well. So stay tuned. If you're not signed up for our newsletter, you can do that at nafa.org or you can follow us on your favorite social media at NAFA official. Thanks again for being here, everyone. Take care.